somewhere between two billion and a billion and a half years ago. An endosymbiosis occurred in which the ancestor of mitochondria entered the proto-eukaryotic cell, and this helped give rise to the eukaryotes. Later, by one billion years ago, a second endosymbiosis had occurred in one lineage of amoeba-like eukaryotes in which a cyanobacterium, a bacteria performing photosynthesis thanks to its green pigment chlorophyll, uh, entered as an endosymbiont. And thus, the cyanobacterium, with its chlorophyll, its ability to perform photosynthesis, uh, fixing carbon and releasing oxygen as a waste, with its inner and outer membranes and its cell wall of peptidoglycan, and with the membrane-bound thylakoids inside the cell, which are continuous with uh, the plasma membrane. This, then, is the ancestor of the chloroplast, which is also green thanks to chlorophyll, which also performs photosynthesis, fixing carbon and releasing oxygen as a waste, which also has an inner and outer membrane, and in one type of algae still retains the peptidoglycan of the bacterial cell wall. Uh, the thylakoids would ultimately separate from the plasma membrane, losing this connection. But the chloroplast is a modified cyanobacterium. This endosymbiosis was the origin of the eukaryotic supergroup Archaeplastida, which includes the modern groups of glaucophyte algae, the picozoans, the red algae, the green algae, and the land plants which evolved from the green algae. The glaucophyte algae are a small group with only 15 known species with the primitive condition of peptidoglycan in the cell wall of chloroplasts. The picozoans are tiny eukaryotes of plankton measuring only three microns in size, which seems uh, to have lost all trace of this chloroplast. The red algae uh, include about 7,000 species, which are mostly marine, the green algae about 22,000 species, mostly fresh water, and the land plants represent the majority of Earth's biomass of living material uh, with more than 300,000 species. The cells classified in Archaeplastida not only possess genes in the nucleus which have been transferred from the cyanobacterial endosymbiont, but they also seem to have possessed another bacteria living inside this ancestral cell um, of the chlamydia group of bacteria. These are intracellular parasites, but it seems that some of the enzymes and pumps produced by chlamydia, whose genes are retained in this group, may have been important in facilitating the early stages of the endosymbiosis of the chloroplast ancestor. As cyanobacteria evolved into the chloroplasts of green algae, which evolved into the chloroplasts of land plants, the genome was reduced and many original genes from the cyanobacteria migrated to the nucleus. After the algal group known as Glaucophyta, um, there is no longer any peptidoglycan cell wall. The thylakoids lost their connection to the inner membrane, the plasma membrane. Um, by land plants, uh, there are multiple chloroplasts. A green alga typically only, only has one chloroplast, um, but in plants there are many chloroplasts and the thylakoids form stacks known as grana. While a chloroplast can possess between 2,000 and 5,000 proteins, they vary from one organism to another. Most of these genes are encoded by nuclear DNA. The chloroplast DNA only encodes about 100 proteins. It is much smaller, the uh, chloroplast chromosome, than what would have been the genome of the ancestral cyanobacteria. In chloroplast, it's only about 120 to 170,000 uh, bases of DNA. 
Uh, this uh, chloroplast chromosome also encodes tRNAs, rRNAs, regulatory non-coding RNAs. Like bacteria, the genes are organized into functional units known as operons. This does not exist in the nucleus. And the RNA polymerase ribosomes form of chromosome replication, and the membrane lipids one finds in uh, chloroplasts are also uh, more similar to their, their cyanobacterial ancestors. Transport between the cytoplasm and the chloroplast, such as of the proteins which are encoded by the nucleus but required by the chloroplast, this transport occurs through TOC channels in the outer chloroplast membrane and TIC channels on the inner membrane. Many proteins which are produced in the cytoplasm are transported to the chloroplast because they include a target sequence of amino acids which identifies that the chloroplast is their destination. Interestingly, there is a modern amoeba which seems to be going through the early process of converting a cyanobacterium into an organelle like a chloroplast. There is a recent endosymbiosis in this species. Uh, it's estimated that it occurred 60 million years ago as opposed to a billion years ago. And the symbiont has already reduced the number of genes in its chromosome by about three quarters, and some of the genes are non-functional pseudogenes. More than 30 of the original cyanobacterial genes have been transferred to the nucleus, and some then of of these genes produce proteins in the cytoplasm which are uh, transported to the endosymbiont. So this seems to be a good model for how an ancient amoeba uh, began the process which transformed a cyanobacterial endosymbiont into the chloroplast of red algae, green algae, and land plants.